Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except for the merits and med mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends, God did not create us to destroy us, and God did not create us to make us suffer, and God did not create us to have us worry in the dark. God made us as a part of God's creation, made in the image of God. That means that we are free to make choices, to love, to create, to reason, and to live in harmony with creation and with God. That is all, by the way, directly from our catechism in the Book of Common Prayer. And when God spoke to us, God did not speak to us in stereo instructions. Do this, then this, then that. We are a storytelling creature. We see our lives as a story. We learn and grow from stories, fiction or nonfiction. And it comes as no surprise, when God came in human form, he was a teacher and a storyteller. Even in the Ten Commandments, the list of instructions is couched in a story from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord you God, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. In other words, this is why I have the authority to say these things to you, this list of instructions. Remember where you started. See how far I have taken you. Listen to me. God couches the instructions in a story. When we think on our lives, when we see, we see them in a narrative, and I first remember paying particular attention to this after a commentary in Time magazine way back in 2000. It was after the sinking of the cursed submarine, a Russian sub, and the sailors who sat in the dark dying at the bottom of the ocean. And one of them took his final moments to tell the tale, scribbling in the dark, what he said literally is true for so many of us, metaphorically. I am writing blindly. His name was Lieutenant Captain Dmitry Kolosnikov, and he wanted his wife and history to know the story of the 23 of the 118 that suffered in their final moments. And so he wrote it down. And now 23 years later, thousands of miles away, we envision what it may have been like in the cold and the dark. We tell our tales to know what, that we are not alone. We listen to stories to know we are not alone. But even more, we share stories so that we can change the ending while we still have time. 
Such is the kingdom of God. Friends, Jesus told a story of the rebel vineyard to hold up a mirror to the religious leaders who had strayed so far from God's intent. He told the tale to those listening so that they would know that they have an alternative. His tale was written down so that we too could learn and grow and change. We cannot say that we were not warned. He told a story because that is how we drink in the world for good or bad. Sometimes when something happened to us, happens to us, we see it in a narrative when it was just a standalone happening. We see causation where there is none. We seek blame sometimes, but sometimes it just is. Say the light turned green. It turned green because it was time for the light to turn green, not because God was smiling on you. Or we had a car accident because the road was slick. It wasn't divine punishment. We see narrative where there is none in the causation, but the ramifications do become part of our story, no matter where they come from. St. Paul tells his story couched in the deep story of Judaism in Philippians. He followed all the rules. He had done everything right, but in his story, he saw that he had held so dear things that were meaningless. The rules he held so dear was nothing, nothing compared to the one he now held dear. His story had changed. He said, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ, Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. We let go of what came before. We run after what lies ahead. It's part of so many stories. Watch almost any romantic comedy, and at the end of the story, someone is running. They've got a glimpse of a different life, one with love in it that they, ha that they want and currently do not have. This rom-com run is nothing in comparison to what St. Paul is talking about. St. Paul had a new hope that his relationship in Christ enabled. Once again, from the Book of Common Prayer, the Christian hope is to live with confidence and newness and fullness of life and to await the coming of Christ in glory and the completion of God's purpose for the world. Even in our visioning of the future, we see it in a story. Our hope is vested in a story. Even our grief, which is so profound and painful at times, is us letting go of a story that we have told ourselves about the way things would be. We're a narrative creature. We see our story, and we are the hero of it. That is not just okay. It's the way we're wired. I remember once in graduate school, we had a writing assignment to tell our story so we could see our preconceived notions and maybe some of our prejudices the only parameters were that we had to tell it in such a way that it was true to us. I was serving as an associate pastor at the time and was in charge of the Christian Discipleship Program, so I had lots of arts and crafts supplies in my office. And I just so happened to glance around and notice that there was a stack of blank journals, no lines, all blank pages, about 50 pages each, sitting on my shelf. Well, I had the time and energy to be creative, so I wrote my story as a children's book drawing the pictures and coloring them in and everything. And when I shared it in class, one of the people in class mentioned that she had a favorite part. Curious, I asked what? She said she loved that there were blank pages at the end of my story. The blank pages were her favorite part. Not because she thought my story was bad, but because the, my, said that my story was not over yet. And friends, as long as there is breath in our lungs, as long as a heart beats in our chest, our story is not over. There are still more words we can say. There is still more we can love, that we, there's still more love that we can share. And there is still some way that we can fold ourselves into God's story and God into ours. The blank pages are yet to be. Even in the dark and the cursed, there was a story to be told. This captain knew that they had no hope of being rescued, but he did not give up on being human and having his story live on past himself. When we give up our hope, we give up on God. Behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? God said to the prophet Isaiah, if it was true for Isaiah, it's true for us. Our story is interwoven with other stories. We are not alone. Because we live in narrative, we live in relationship. There were all kinds of relationships in Jesus' parable. 
And Paul makes claims on his readers because of their relationship to him. If you ever feel like God has written you off and there is no hope, remember that even Jesus was written off. In our parable today by the Pharisees and religious leaders, they had no respect for him. And after he died, he was written off by everyone. Everyone thought the story was over, even the ones who loved him most. But even here, even when all was hopeless in the story, there was a hint that the tale was not over and the prophecy held true. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. When everyone and everything tells you that you are worthless or that your story is over, Jesus is there to whisper, but wait, there's more. I believe this story. I believe when days are dark. I believe it when I'm on top of the world. My story has his story, or better yet, I am a part of his story. So my story has not and will not ever end. And there is so much yet to come. God bless you this day. Thank you for being with us. We hope to see you in person. God bless and have a great week. Amen.